physical nature of the game. It seemed as if you guys, you know, went at them, especially on the boards in the first half and kind of set that tone. What, what, was, was that something you were looking to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think we, we kind of pride ourselves on, on being one of the more physical teams in the Big East. Um, so I think jumping out to get that early lead really, really did set the tone of the game. And uh, that physicality really, really allowed us to, to, to be great on the defensive side of the ball. And then um, we kind of just carried that throughout the whole game. Justin, what does it say about the group on a day when Nate struggles and then AJ gets hurt early on that you guys are able to still kind of hum along in the fashion that you did? What does it say about the group? Yeah, I mean, it, it just shows that we, we got each other's backs. I mean, whenever one of our guys go down, we want to we want to pick it up for them. And um, I mean, I, I think Nate Nate brings a tremendous amount of energy to our team every day. Um, doesn't mean he's gonna be great every day, and none, none of us are gonna be great. So that's kind of what we're here for is to to pick each other up. So, if you uh, how comfortable are you getting out there offensively? It was one of your better games so offensively on the season. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I felt good. I mean, I felt that I felt like I was able to to get off a. Uh, off to a good start. Um, I think rebounding the ball kind of helped me. I was able to get an early offensive rebound and that kind of let me settle into the game and kind of just, just play under control a little bit and and, and just let, let me uh, get into rhythm good, so. Justin, how does it help that you can make a three? You know, you haven't shot the ball great from the three this year, but you, uh, you made one early on and that seemed to get you going a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I work on it. So, I mean, I, I stay confident. I mean, I work on it every day and uh, the coaches believe in me, I believe in myself. And uh, I try and just just stay confident throughout it all. Justin, can you talk about the, I guess just the confidence of this group right now, this eight game winning streak? Do you guys feel like every time you take the court, it's your game to win? Yeah, yeah, yeah we feel good. I mean, I, I I think we all believe in each other, and, and we try and go by this mentality where it's one and zero each day. Uh, we just kind of just take it day by day, and just just enjoy really enjoy playing with each other. And I mean, it, it's really it's been really fun. Justin, in terms of Jared, uh, what does he do for you guys when he's out on the floor? Obviously, the last three games, he's been scoring more than normal. But in terms of, you know, dishing the ball, seven assists today, and, and he found you a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he, he's been great. He's been great. He, he really pushes the pace. He get, gets us into offense quickly. And he, he just he's bring, brings that energy and that scoring, uh, that playmaking um, off the bench. That's, that's been really great for us these last few games. And, and he's going to continue to do that. Justin, you had a uh, you had a double double today. I know Noah had one last game. What's it like playing with him? Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, me and him are always kind of we kind of always compete to get rebounds and stuff, and we kind of joke with each other about just stealing each other's rebounds and everything. But I mean, it's it's been great. Noah's been one of my favorite teammates to play with because he kind of has that that same rebounding mentality that I have, where we want to try and get everyone we can get. So. Justin, when you have both Jared and Al on the floor at the same time and two guys who can both penetrate, how much does that make this offense even more efficient potentially when you have two guys who can get to the rim? Yeah, I mean, it makes, it makes everything so much easier for everybody. I mean, they're, they're some of the best playmakers I've ever played with. I mean, the way the way uh, Jared's able to get into the lane and, and kick out and, and finish, and same thing with Al. Al's Al ability to, to, to get fouls, to, to finish at the rim has been great. So. Justin, coach talks about the maturity of this group all the time. We just keep talking about all your teammates here, but you know, you yourself as well, all the experience that you have, you feel that every time you're out on the court and especially early in the second half, you know, the ball starts to try to make a run and you hit a couple of big shots and sort of, you know, puts the game away. Do you sense that every time there's a moment you guys need to step up, you do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely do. I mean, we, we got a lot of older guys in our locker room um, <clears throat> and that, that kind of, Kind of calms the group, and and we most of us have been been in situations like that where we've been up twenty and, and a team wants to go on a run, or we've also been in situations where we've been down and and we, and we need to need to make a run to get back in the game. So I mean, when you have such an experienced group like this, I mean, we kind of seen it all. So it's been good. Justin, as the winning streak grows, as you guys fly up the national rankings, as you guys continue to play teams, that target's going to keep getting bigger, right? Because you guys are going to continue to be in that national spotlight. What do you think the key is? For the guys to stay task at hand. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we try not to think about it too much. I mean, like like I said before, um, we kind of brought this this one and zero today mentality every day, and we try and just win each day, and then we kind of take it day by day and not worry too much about everything else that's going on around us because all the stuff that really matters is what happens each day. Is it retro jerseys from here on out? Yeah, they should be. We were playing good with them. <laughs> <laughs> A lighter question here for you, Justin. It's New Year's Day. Do you have any New Year's resolutions you're making? Uh, nah, I actually don't, man. I'm just, I'm just trying, 
I was trying to just stay positive and like I said, just live day by day, live in the moment and just enjoy myself. I mean, because this doesn't last forever. So just try to enjoy it as best I can. Hey, Ed, the um, uh, ask Justin, it seemed as if you guys came out really determined to set a physical tone, especially off the glass in that first half. Uh, did I read that correctly? It certainly uh, appeared that way in the first half. Kevin, I thought our preparation was really good. Um, you know, we talked about it again. When you when you watch film of this DePaul team, they're skilled. They have two of the better scores. They have three of the top six rebounders. You know, they're second in the league in rebound. I mean, they fly to the glass. And it's a credit to our players, uh, you know, determination and will to try to fight for everything. Um, you know, we were able to set the tone early and it just was able to carry through for, you know, I thought we played a really, really good game today because this team, again, this team is scary, scary watching them on film. So uh, they had our players' attention for sure. Hey, Ed, what's the uh, confidence level of this group like when you guys, uh, you know, win eight in a row and, and all the good things you guys are doing on the court? Do you feel that like every time on the court it's your game to win? Well, I mean, I, you know, you're not trying to count them in a row. Again, the players, the players and the coaches' mantras go 1-0 and today. Um, you know, again, you know, if, if, you get, if you get happy or you get content in our league, you're going to get beat by 100. So um, I think it's a credit to the maturity. Again, we have an older group out there. Um, they've been great in our preparation. They've been really, really good asking questions in the scouting reports. I give our staff a lot of credit. The coaches are doing a great job uh, presenting it to the team and then presenting it to the staff on what we got to try to do to execute both offensively and defensively. And guys, this was a this is a DePaul team that's talented, averaging close to 80 points a game, playing on the road. This is one of our better road wins we've had in a long, long time. So, you know, it's, it's a credit to the players. Ed, where's your uh, defensive mindset right now? Are you pretty happy with the way you've been playing? We are. Uh, I think it's I think it's a fair question. Um, our guys, uh, you know, we're trying not to give up any easy baskets. You know, you want to make every team earn everything, whether it's at the rim, whether it be a tough two, um, try to take the three away. Threes change the game. Anytime you're giving up multiple threes, indication, I think we were up by, uh, I don't know, 20-something, and then they make back-to-back -back threes. Um, you know, you got to try. You got to try to make it a tough two game and try to get to the free throw line as much as you can. And if you do that, you normally control the game. Ed, when when, you, when when someone like Nate Watson is willing to dive for a loose ball up twenty one points, what sort of message does that send to the rest of your guys? My man, great question. Honestly, really, really astute. Uh, it sends the message that no matter who you are, if you're determined to win and you're determined to do the things it takes to win, those to me are called hustle plays winning plays, energy plays, culture plays. Uh, it's a really big credit to Nate, really big credit to him setting the tone, you know, being a fifth year guy at 200 and damn near 70 pounds getting on the floor like that. that that's, a, that, that, that's a great observation there. Thank you for noticing that. Ed, first off, happy new year. Happy new year to you, Brandon. Wanted to ask you about when you have Al and Jared out there, two guys who can attack the rim, either finish or kick back out to teammates. How much have you seen since Jared's come back maybe an offense that you envisioned when you brought out to a PC last spring? Well, we've always wanted to try to play multiple guards. And, you know, there's, there's a method to the madness of bringing him off the bench after he's come out of the injury. I think he changes the pace of the game. He gives us a different look. Anytime you have a secondary ball handler on the floor and you have some options out there that can make shots, you have a post presence like Ed and Nate, I think it gives you a good floor balance and you're able to spread the floor a little bit. They just have to be a really good quarterback and making sure the right guys are touching the ball in their sweet spots. Any update on AJ? I don't, I, you know, I, I know we heard it pretty good. Um, scrolling pretty good. You know, uh, I got to wait for the medical report from the doctors and from our trainer. Right when we do that, we'll definitely let you guys know. I, as of right now, um, you know, it's, it's wrapped up pretty heavily. And, uh, you know, I, I just pray it's not something that's going to be long lasting because he's a, he's a big, big, big weapon for us. And what does this say about your group with AJ with limited minutes and Nate not scoring that much today that you guys are still able to do what you were able to do today? Well, it shows, it, it shows the balance of the group, you know? I mean, again, if you would have told me yesterday that my big boy would go one for nine and, you know, AJ would play eight minutes, and we were able to control the game, you know, I, I'd be lying to you, but it goes to tell you the determination of the group, the focus of the group, 
and the other guys taking opportunities when, when, when their number was called. So it's, it's really a good team win for us. The attacking yeah, there, mentality there, too, uh, yeah, the, the attacking mentality, uh, the fact that in the first half you're able to, you know, control the paint and it's not just Nate down there, you know, doing what he usually does. It's the attacking mentality that you had going to the basket. Absolutely. You know, uh, something that we wanted to do, we want to touch the paint as much as we can. We always talk about this. The teams that touch the paint the most probably have the most urgency to win. And it's a it's a really high priority for us to try to get paint touches, whether it be off the driver or the post catch, um, you know, try to play in transition a little bit and touch the paint. And I thought Jared, uh, I thought Breed and I thought Al Durham tried to do that consistently over the course of the game. And again, when you look at the balance of the league, guys, the balance of the league, I want to make sure we always talk about our league, uh, the competitive nature from top to bottom for us to come in here and, and to play that well uh, against a team coming off a tough, tough loss on the road. It's a, it's, it's a credit to the players. At the last five or six games, you've done a good job taking care of the ball. And I know today you guys were very judicious with your shot selection. I, I wonder just maybe how those habits allow you to help uh, control pace against a team like DePaulo wants to get up and down a little bit. Well, again, you know, I thought our defense dictated the entire tempo of here. You know, we didn't play as well as we wanted in the second half. You know, I thought we had some uncharacteristic turnovers. But again, you know, you're still playing with a, somewhat of a new group and playing with a lead like that. Sometimes it gets hard. Uh, and I love your word. You use judicious. That's a, a Clark Kellogg word right there. So, you know, you may owe him some money on that one. Um, I think this is three or four games in a row where we haven't had double digit turnover. So if you're not turning the ball over and you're getting to the free throw line and you're rebounding, you're going to give yourself an opportunity to win games. Hey, Ed, off the court, when you're on an extended road trip like this and confidence is high, guys don't have uh, schoolwork. What do you look forward to the next couple of days? You know, uh, obviously you're, you're oh, my, my preparation for Marquette. I mean, we're, we're not here to enjoy the windy city or go up to no. It, it's a business trip. You know, and again, when you've got an older group like that, you really appreciate their focus on that. Um, I, honestly, more, it's, it's just a matter of, hey, let's get some rest tonight. We're going to stay here in Chicago tonight and then head to Milwaukee tomorrow after a walkthrough. We've got two days to prepare for a, a Marquette team that's coming off of a brutal double overtime loss. And I think they've lost a couple of games in a row. So we're going to have a really, really hard game at the Pfizer Arena. And I just, uh, if we continue to improve, and that's what the staff continues to talk about. Let's get better today. Let's improve today. And let's prepare for our next opponent. Yeah, and your early impressions of Marquette, knowing that, you know, three out of the last four years, you've had overtime games. Games have gone down to the wire, high scoring, grinded out. And the, the sort of position that they're in, like you mentioned, four straight losses to good teams. I mean, what do you think, you know, goes down Tuesday and, and what do you have to do? Well, you know, number one, they, they, you know, their offense, they do a great job with their ball screen offense. They're really, really good in transition. You know, they have some guys that can really defend the rim. They have one of the best defenders in the country and, in, in, uh, you know, Marcel, who's, who's from Maryland. You know, Tyler Kolick is, you know, leading the league in assists. And, you know, we're really, really familiar with him. Um, you know, we, we're going to have to prepare. And, you know, when you're not playing at the dunk, you got to try to steal some games on the road. And we've been fortunate to get a couple. So, uh, it's a credit to the players and, and, and our veteran leadership. And I know it was Jones the first game back for DePaul, but, you know, he finished one for nine today. Does that kind of speak to somebody like Justin kind of locking him down like you uh, talked about a little before he came on? You know, Justin has not speak, spoke of enough to me defensively on what he brings, his energy. And, again, everybody always looks at the box score. And, again, he's, you know, he's really improving his shooting. Our staff has done a great job keeping him in the gym, keeping his confidence high. But Justin is an elite level, elite level defender. And he's one of the better defenders that I've ever coached. And this is going back to when I was with Coach Skinner. We had guys like Kenny Harley. We had guys like, uh, what's the whack job, my, my, my guy from, uh, from Michigan. Ryan, Ryan Sidney. Ryan Sidney, I love him. And he was probably the toughest kid we've ever coached. Um, you know, we had the other kid from Boston there. Uh, he is an elite level defender. With that size, athleticism, and energy, Wow, that's 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 pretty impressive that he's able to do that, and he's been doing it consistently all year. He has to guard the best players. He should be easily the the front runner for the Big East Defensive Player of the Year for sure. Coach, I don't know how much you've gotten into the game plan for Marquette yet, but I know you've coached against Shaka Smart before. You had a home and home with him when uh, he was at Texas. 
Is there anything from those games in the past that can translate when it comes to scheme, or is this really a, a fresh new situation? Oh, it's a totally different, you know, he, he, to, totally different style they're playing. You know, they have different players. He's still, you know, he's still, you know, getting his group together. He's first year there. Um, it's going to be a tough game. I mean, it's the Big East. All the games are hard. So, you know, I, I just want to prepare to win by one, get on the plane and come home, and then prepare for our next home game. So it's, um, it, it, it's good. But it's, um, I hope you guys have had a, a great, great New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, I definitely wanted to make sure we did this so we get our home people back, uh, you know, with this here. Uh, are there any other questions? Because I'm getting, I, I, I got to get some water. Any more questions? Are we good? Appreciate it, Ed. Thank uh, you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Right. Thanks, Thanks, man. Happy New Year. Go Friars. Happy New Year, guys. New Year's resolution. Win tomorrow. Talk to you.